record. So what I wanted to do today is show you just some, some simple stuff. And um, we we're playing with this yesterday. So um, Mario, you know, I work with the, you know, first of all, I want to, I want to pray today. Uh, Father, we just thank you for uh, today. Anytime we approach fundraising, we research and seek. Uh, you want us to be good schools, and uh, we trust that as plan B. But Father, you go out of your way to reveal plan A, surprises, money that comes from places we hadn't seen before. And uh, Father, we know you are the one that has those resources, and we're just stewarding them. We want to steward our work. We want to be good stewards of what we know. But Father, we depend upon you. And we're just excited by those surprises, excited by the way that you demonstrate to us your love and often bring money. It doesn't come as a result of our work, but your blessing. Is Father, we pray this in the name of you. So I'm going to mute you, uh, Bernard, because I thought I heard some noise. Okay, here we go. But you can unmute at any time. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, let me share just real quickly. Um, okay, share screen. This is a database where we were, I, and this is a new database. And what I will do, what literally what I'm working on is this is called Funds for NGOs. And I would not suggest, I've got a $50 a year premium thing. I would not suggest you do that. What I suggest instead is let me give you my, my, uh, my how I get into it. So you can play with it. I'm not sure yet I like this one. Um, and I'm working on getting access to uh, Foundation Search, which is a large one, and iWave. And they're very expensive. And so I'm trying to figure out discounts and such. If I do so, I will make that available to uh, BGU people that go through fundraising. We'll have to figure out a way to do it. But I just wanted to show you this as an example. So this is called Funds for NGOs. It's the only one that I have found that is not focused uh, mainly on the United States. It, they've done uh, the best job I've seen so far, but I'm still looking for looking for foundations that are not United States based. Now you can, they have those, but there's other like foundation search is a more expensive database. And eventually I'm gonna give access to that for you guys. Um, we'll figure out how to do that, but that's US based. There's a lot of US based ones. And, and I'll hope to get that in the next couple of weeks and let you have access to it. But here's a, Here's an example. Let me go back to my dashboard. Um, so, um, and again, what I think we're going to use this for is just to kind of play. I haven't found, it seems to not be good for um, religious. It's more non-Christian. However, it has education emphasis, right? And, and mm -hmm. you can fit that. And it has a community development and education. So a lot of the areas that you guys work in, this foundation, this search would have that, um, but it, it's not going to necessarily emphasize Christian. Mm -hmm. On some of these other ones, you can really find the Christian foundations, but given the international element of it, I can understand why. So basically, this is called Funds for NGO. Um, they have your little dashboard, and so I can choose to go either global or U.S.-based, and uh, again, if you're going to play with it at some point, um, and I'm sorry I'm running so slow today, okay, um, so here's local, I don't want that. I wanna go back to global, but you can choose that. And when it says local, it's really gonna be in US, the way this foundation works, okay? Um, and then we come out here, you have, um, uh, uh, I've selected, I can do the American areas. And so I have alerts that I can do, but let's come back over here. So it has uh, advanced grant search. So it has a lot of different features. Almost all of them have this. And I was looking at the, Car the, the Caribbean yesterday because we're working with the EAC. There's 24 countries in the Caribbean. If I search for religion, I don't get nothing, okay? I get um, a Catholic grant, a spiritual yearning grant, whatever that is, um, a Shoka program, and a Jewish program. So that tells you the strength of this particular database is not going to be Christian mm -hmm. at all. Uh, but if I go instead and I come out here, these are all the things I can search for. So that's my region is the Caribbean. I can look for, um, let me come back out here. I don't know if you can see the drop down or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can do business and industry. Is there micro loans? That's interesting. Let's try that. Uh, I miss not, that may be too many. 
So let's look at community development. Let's look at economic development. Let's look at education. Um, let's see, let's just try that. Um, but you can see kind of the areas that they want that you can choose between. Um, and I have religion in there, I'm gonna take it out because it doesn't have anything. Um, sustainable development. Uh, let's try that. So then I do a search, okay? And so I'm searching the Caribbean. I'm searching for those topics, okay? And what it's doing is it's finding grant requests out there. If you notice, I didn't put in the grant size, the grant type, the donor agency, and nor did I give it a time frequency, you know, because most of these are saying, here's your window for getting the grant. So you've got all kinds of stuff in here. This is why if you had somebody to help you, this is not an exact science and it's a lot of work. But if there's somebody that's wired that just likes to be kind of a detective, this is like their dream. I mean, they can go in and find stuff and tag it and kind of do it. But again, they're, they're, they're wired differently than probably any of us are. Um, but for people that like to do that, like our detective type people, this is fun. And so you've got, um, so here you've got, so you've got like Cisco, okay, they're gonna come with an agenda, but you know, that's what it is. Here's a global fund for Jesus. Not sure what that is, okay? Um, but it's interesting. The grant sizes are pretty small, okay? You've got your deadline grant. Um, and I'm not sure what that is. Uh, notice that it didn't show up in the religion category. It only showed up in one of these other categories. Um, and to go after a grant size that's 1,000 to 10,000, you know, that may not be worth your time, okay? But so what we've got here, and again, this is coming up pretty fast. So you've got uh, a place to go. It's accepting nominations for NGO grant awards based upon poverty, poverty alleviation. Um, they do what Jesus would have done. Okay, that's nothing wrong with that. We like that. Um, so, you know, here's you kind of, you can kind of get a feel for, okay, is that worth going after? And then if you're gonna apply for this, you can kind of put that as your thing you can go look for more information to Global Fund for Jesus if you want that. I don't know if we're gonna lose our site here. So, they, which is a Facebook page rather than a website. That always gives you, a, a, that shows, somebody's trying to validate your organization. All you've got is a Facebook page. There's a point of it you go, oh, I'm not sure, but maybe. So, you know, it's, um, again, somebody's gotta kind of look in. I'm not sure what I found here. Uh, it looks like it's a grant award that you get your picture taken. Um, you know, I'm not sure, okay. Uh, but those are the kind of things that you're you're looking for. Uh, come down here. Uh, let me pull it back out. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, here we go, and we'll go back to here. Okay, so. Um, there we go back to advanced search. So that's one. Okay. Then you have Cisco's got one. You've got um, basically you can kind of tell, you can just do search. You could spend all day on this thing and not find anything. But it's it's a process of kind of saying, okay, what is out there that might be something I don't know that I could approach? Um, and again, having somebody that you kind of oversee, watch, that's kind of a detective type. This does not have to be a full-time person. Uh, to kind of look for these things. So here's um, so here's one, not sure what category fellowship is, a lot of technology grants, as you can see in this thing. Uh, here's an art support program, why they're doing art when I didn't ask for that, I'm not sure. Um, here you've got you know, different things. But if you notice, it has, how many pages do we have here? Um, let's see what happens in the last. It's hard to tell the way this database works. So it has six pages of these things, okay? Um, and you've got, you know, all kinds of stuff that is not useful. Here's a USA aid thing. Those are always interesting because they're big. Um, okay, uh, so this is on reconstruction of earthquake affected areas in Haiti. Well, there's a lot of work in Haiti, as you know, but sometimes that helps you to kind of go, and that that's not something, Mario, you'd be working in. But you're always are looking for, okay, what is this Innovation Ventures program? Uh, more than a million, okay. 
again, that could pull you off your mission. Um, okay, here's a, I don't know what this is. Um, again, some of these are so large, they're really not at the size that we can work with them. Uh, again, USAID, USAID wants to go big. Uh, one of the things that leadership foundations have done in the past is they found a big gigantic grant like this in the United States and said, it doesn't make sense. They want a big grant, but they want a compiler. So uh, LF would approach, get a big grant, and then demonstrate to them that that grant was going out to multiple LF cities. So they were a compiler of a grant because USAID or the United States government did not want to have 10 different city grants. They wanted one grant, one person responsible, even though it's delivered through 10 different cities. And that was a great way to do it because it works for the government. They want a compiler. It worked for the cities. They don't, they don't want to apply for such a big grant uh, and have to do all the reporting. And of course, LF would take a, a large part of that grant to do the reporting, to pay for the people it took to find the grant, to do that. Cities were happy because they got uh, the cities because they got some of the money. So this just gives you um, an idea, let me back up a little bit to two, of a type of database. Um, so let me, any questions you have about kind of what you're looking at here? Yeah, this is very helpful. <clears throat> um, again, because we haven't been in the position of doing a lot of fundraising, um, for the most of our needs, we never engage in research. And this is a very important part of, if you wanna become self-sustaining in terms of raising your own funds, uh, you have to research. Because there are people out there whose jobs is to give money, but if you don't know where they are, how to apply for those monies, and trust that eventually you will manage to get those grants. Um, uh, and it helps you prepare too, because sometimes the requirements um, forces you to go back and fine tune whatever might be the reason they won't give you the, the grant. Sometimes legal stuff, structure stuff, uh, the way your web page is set up. So I think it's a good idea. But one thing I would suggest on this is Mario, it's not low hanging fruit. Yeah. The more important stuff is your relationships. It is some, so for you to spend a whole lot of time digging around on here in your position for any of you, that doesn't make sense. Um, and so, um, you know, so, but it does, it does be aware of it. Um, and so um, let me see how they're doing Ivory Coast here. No, let's see, Africa, okay, countries. Say dislike all, you know, and, and and the point is to be aware of it, to know that it's there. Um, let's see if they do Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. They're not. It, and this is the problem. Looks like though. Here we go. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There we go. And let's see what happens when I do. Uh, let's just do a search. This will give you a little bit of an idea, Brian. I think I had education in there. Okay. Mm, so yeah, like yeah. the Global Fund for Jesus is in everywhere. Well, that's okay. That's good. Um, projects impact. So what ends up happening is this can be a little bit misleading because you go, oh my goodness, there's a grant, you know, whoa, this one's for a thousand to 10,000 or, or more than a million. <laughs> But each one of them is a lot of work. And uh, a lot of them you may not qualify for. A lot of them may be biased against religion. So it can be, it can be wrong, it can be misleading. Uh, but mm -hmm. if you did have somebody on your staff that you could train or just even part-time or if you hired a project manager, you, they would find enough to probably eventually pay for themselves as they're digging around. But you'd have to help them. Uh, this is not something you kind of have to say, Okay, you gave me 10, all of them are not right. Okay, they won't work. Let's talk about the wisdom of how to do this. And so it's still gonna take you time to train them, but to get them trained to dig around to this stuff um, could be helpful. Yeah, yeah. To, to jump in very quickly, my, in my case, the, what is very important for me is to be able to locate the tools that must be used, like what you are showing to us. 
I will be able to have a direct contact with the people to walk into the office and even have a, a face-to-face talk with them. That will be easy. Once I've been able to identify where those grants are, who are those people that are responsible for them, that makes it easy for me. But the question is how to get them is the problem. So I'll be able to walk to any office and find out, okay, this is what we do, are we qualified? If they say no, okay, that's fine. Then we can just go ahead with any other thing. And if you take about 10 to 20 of them, by the time you walk through all these places, get appointment to go and talk to the grant managers, you might get something out anyway. And here is, here is if you want to play with it, um, let me make sure I've got the right website there. Um, this is my login my, and it's, uh, it's in my email, uh, mm-hmm. BG1234 and it has an asterisk at the end. Uh, and let me make sure I have the right, uh, I think I'm uh, the right place. Again, don't waste your time on it too much. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you wanted just to play with it, uh, do that. If for some reason, both of us are in there, you're in there and somebody else says, I'm assuming what they would do is say somebody else is here and you just wait. Or what you could do is, uh, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, it's called Funds for NGOs. Let me give mm-hmm. you the right exact thing. All right, here we go. Uh, Yeah, it's funds for NGOs. Here we go. This is the login. Okay. And what I can hold on. Again, I wouldn't waste a lot of time on it, but it's worth maybe playing with. Just for so there, there is my login there. So you log in. It's my email, BG123, capital B, GU1234, asterisk, funds for NGOs. Um, and then you can copy this, by the way, out of chat. Just put it on a document if you want. HTMS login and see what you find. You know, and frankly, if you find some good stuff, report back and go, hey, I figured mm-hmm. out this and this is what I found. So let me now, I'm going to move to show you kind of how you do research. So let's say you found a foundation. And I like this particular website. I know that people well uh, have served on some of their boards, um, advisory boards, not on the actual funding board. So this is McClellan. Uh, Mario, I'm I'm sure you're familiar with him. This is a US foundation, it's very large. It's in uh, Chattanooga. Now, what you're doing is this is like you found somebody and you're, you're, uh, it's like you're asking a girl out and you're kind of trying to figure out, okay, who is this girl before I ask her out, right? Uh, So you're asking friends, but what happens is a good foundation gives you all the information you need to make a great letter of inquiry. So let's look at this, okay? So notice, you always start with, okay, what is their vision? How do they see themselves? And notice the very first thing they do up here is they kind of give you, we partner with Courageous, the Courageous to change the world. Okay, that's good, I'm the Courageous. Um, and then they, they don't give you a lot of options. If you notice, there's not a lot of stuff you can do on this website uh, at all. What they want you to do before they do anything is learn about us very wise to realize, okay, they're wanting, and what is the first thing they tell you? Their history. Okay, that's an interesting dynamic. They want you to know their history. Okay. And it goes through this whole thing about Thomas McClellan, when he was born, this is worth, you know, you go, okay, why are they telling us all this stuff? It's important to them. And so if you're dating somebody, again, we're all married, but if you're trying to get to know somebody, you kind of want to know what's imp- what is important to you before I start telling you what's important to me, okay? They want you to read his covenant. Uh, this is a covenant from 1857. They want you to hear about him moving. And so you read it. You figure out, okay, this history is important. And of course, Ewell McClellan is still, he's the, the main principal. It's a family foundation. Most of the board members are family members. They want you to know about their family, okay? But you go, okay, that's important. And so notice how they did all this. They want you to read all this. And now they give you the, you know, the whole background. Okay, Gil McClellan is the, the pressure uh, guy. And so, um, so you read through all that. So, okay, that was important. Then, um, then if you notice, and I'm gonna have to probably not share to do this. Let's see if I can get to it. There is a way to get into, okay, here we go. Now you look at these little three buttons over here. So notice they kind of hit them, okay, but they're there, okay, so now you open up, okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff, the home, the history, 
you look at it, okay, they have multiple foundations. Um, so they have a foundation that is the McClellan Foundation. And they want you to tell you, notice how they're giving you their history. Uh, the local church promoting discipleship and leadership development, sparking community trends. They're giving you everything you need to know about their giving interest in the first paragraph, okay? Um, Faith-based, then that's interesting. Here, you have another foundation, right? That's under their group of foundation. The churches expands by word and deed, focus primarily on greater Chattanooga. You go, oh, you wouldn't have known that in the name, okay? But when you see this in the paragraph, you go, okay, I'm probably not gonna go there. The Christian Education Fund, okay? Um, okay, again, notice that they don't allow you to apply for that. Okay, did you see that? Okay, why? And, and I know that most of that money goes to um, uh, uh, educational institutions that the McClellan family graduated from, okay? And they've taken out the buddy. The, so the only way you can apply to that is you're going to be invited by a McClellan Foundation member because you are in a school that they probably graduated from. Now, you didn't know that, but you also saw there's no button there. And so that would tell you, Bright, that's really not someplace you would proceed. Yeah. But up here, so there's, you're just kind of learning about this foundation, right? But yeah. up here, you do have um, discipleship and leadership development. So, for example, when I approach them, the first thing they do is say, you're, you know, your university, we don't do that. Okay, we do that down here and nobody graduated from your university. So I have to approach them as a leadership development institution. And when I approach it, I'm not giving them a formal program. I'm giving them a non-formal program <clears throat> because that's what they want. They haven't put education up here. Okay, um, they put leadership development. Okay, and these are all little things you're just learning but there's a lot to learn on how they presented themselves. Okay, so now we're into that foundation. It's our mission, okay? Again, history, uh, okay. No, now I'm, in, I'm actually in the foundation that is for leadership development and community development. Notice they restate their history. Their history is very important to them, okay? And here's the areas of focus. Discipleship, developing leaders, prayer and scripture, evangelism, generosity, developing organizations, okay? So for example, as I've approached them for the WA, they're interested, now they're also divided into regions. And so we're in the process of helping the Asia Evangelical Alliance develop a generosity grant because that's what they wanted. And it fits the fundraising uh, priorities we're looking for in Asia, okay? So you're kind of figuring out, okay, what's going on here? Um, Prayer and scripture, they put a grant together just to help people pray and encourage each other. That's, you know, and so when you see something like that, you're thinking, very interesting. I need to ask more about it. It's not exactly clear. Uh, that's interesting. So you would look at it and say, so Bright, you'd look at it and say, probably developing leaders is where I'm coming from, but I've got to present it in a non-formal way, not necessarily a formal education. Um, mm -hmm. Mario, you could come at it from several places, disciples, developing leaders, prayer and scripture, evangelism. Generosity is an interesting thing. And um, they support two organizations. One is Generous Giving. Secondly, Generosity Path. Both of them came out of the McCullen Foundation. And the third is the Global Trust Partners. Now that's not here, but those are all part of this generosity thing here. And so then you go, okay, that's interesting. So what do I do is I, and they want you to know their areas. So then I come back over here and I go down here. I go back to the foundations. There's a knowledge base that they want you to look at, okay? A knowledge base is questions, okay, that you're asking. Will you provide me advice? Will you provide scholarships? Do you have any jobs or interns available? So this is their FAQs, okay? Funding questions. What type of organizations do you fund? Okay, let's go look. Um, uh, you've got uh, 501c3s. And so that's always an issue in a, in a U.S. foundation that you'll probably need to build a 501c3 um, vehicle to, to be able to give money, to, to receive money from U.S. foundations. A variety of ways to do that. Um, um, and if I, and I can go into what that means of how you would set that up, if you're going to get a lot of money from the United States and that yeah, may not so, make sense to you, go ahead. 
Yeah, so uh, if you have to be able to teach, how we can read about it. Are we able to learn about it ourselves? About the 501c3. Uh, say that again. The 501c3, are we able to learn about it ourselves? Um, okay, let me kind of go into that a little bit. A 501c3. Kind of helped. Um, we, we did that in the States. It's not necessarily active doing what it was supposed to do to raise funds for us. We don't have a staff there. We have only have a board that agreed to be our board, but we actually established organization in the States. That's oh, exactly okay. what a lot of people do, Brian. The problem okay. is you've gotten a lot of money locally. You may not, it may not be worth it for you. Mario mm -hmm. got a lot of money from foundations in the Grand Rapids areas and others, and he had to do that. It's a vehicle that he had to do. But he, now mm -hmm. that he has it, that gives him a vehicle for places like McClellan, other places. And again, you might, you know, Mario could probably tell you more uh, great details. World Evangelical Alliance, we have a 501c3 in the US. And so all the money that goes, goes through that one, okay? Um, and we have to kind of tra air traffic control it a little bit. So what it basically is, it's a, it's not a shell. It's actually a, a, uh, an organization that is legally formed to support what, what's going on globally. But because these foundations require, and 501c3, all that means it's a not-for-profit organization that has filed for tax exemption and received it. So first of all, you create a not-for-profit organization in the United States. Secondly, you have to file for tax exemption, and that takes you know, several months. You get that. Once you have that, it's called a 501c3, and then you can receive money from grants uh, from foundations like this. We're we'll happy to kind of show you some avenues, but to do that, you would need partners in the United States that'd be willing to do that. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes what we do, Bright, although we don't want to do it long term, is if something is a project that's consistent with BGU values, okay, mm -hmm. we can create a fund to help you get started on it. But that's it has to be consistent with our our calling and mm -hmm. our mission, and so we've created a fund to help that start but that's not a long-term solution. Okay. If it's something that's not consistent with us. You are, you're an education institution, so you would be. Uh, mm. But if it's not consistent, if it's a relief and development, those kind of things, we can't do that. Mm. So, but that's a vehicle. But again, Mario might be able to give you more information of exactly how it's set up. And again, peer learning is huge here and even, you know, talk about, you know, how that works, but that's mm. impossible. So yeah, Mario, so I think that we have to be able to get some documentation about ourselves and put some things together. We can exchange ideas as to what to do, okay? Yeah. So it's those, are, those are some the states then in the DER to obtain an incorporation. Yeah, so I think you need to be able to put up uh, some um, WhatsApp group already. Mario has the, so you put us all together so that we can be exchanging some okay. ideas as to how we move forward. I sure. will do that. I will do that. Um, okay. And what I'll probably do is put in those of you that are kind of showing up here and tell everybody else is there if they want to. But I've, a lot of people are auditing this and um, don't have the same commitment, I guess. And so okay. I'll, I'll put a WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. okay. Easy to do. Um, mm. So let me let me stop at this point. What I want to do is just to demonstrate that, show that. Um, um, okay, yeah, let me get your number. Mm. I, sometimes they're in the database, but sometimes what's in the database is not mm -hmm. what you want to use for a WhatsApp. So nine eight zero. This in the chat. Five one two five. Five one two five. Yeah, if you could put your phone numbers in there, that'd be great. So the next step, um, anyway, stop. Let me stop at this point. I just wanted to kind of show you some of that, um, and kind of um, any thoughts on any questions about that. It's a lot of work. Um, that's why sometimes we don't do it. <laughs> well, exactly, <laughs> and, it's, and it's not efficient. It's not efficient. That's the problem. Is you're fishing. You're fishing in a pond. That when you catch something, you catch something, but you never know. You're just casting, and uh, that's why, as the president of your organization, you've got to think through: um, how do I use my time well? How do I go for low-hanging fruit, which is normally relational, 
And mm -hmm. how do I kind of build a team to help me, but not a team that's expensive? Yeah. And so it's uh, that's the issue. One of the struggles I've had <clears throat> lately, Professor, is that my primary calling, even though I have administrative skills and even the training how to run an organization, um, and there is some joys, uh, there are some joys in doing it. My primary calling is actually to, to form and mentor others, uh, kind of disciple others, not necessarily into, you know, fundraising is discipleship, but it's mainly um, disciple people to serve in life and ministry. I'm a preacher, I'm a teacher. Uh, I can fundraise, I can ask people for money uh, for specific initiatives. Uh, I've done it and somehow God has blessed our effort. <clears throat> but we're growing as an organization, so we need more funding, more capacity to do what we, we are called, what we have discerning that is calling us to do. Uh, so sometimes struggle, and just stay small, just keep doing what you do and, you know, and relax. Don't try to be a million dollar organization or $2 million organization. It's good to stay with three, four or five people in your team. And it's been good so far. But at the same time, you know, there is opportunity to do more and to be even more effective. Um, so there is nothing wrong with fundraising, but sometimes it's, been, it's not my primary calling. I don't want to spend my time doing that. I, uh, I can do it while I'm doing the other thing, when I have the opportunity to present and talk about what we're doing, but I need somebody else to administer, uh, to follow up, you know, to write the reports and things like that, but sometimes it takes so much time from you. You do, and that, that is, that's the truth. So I'm gonna pause us just a bit.